Good afternoon, Buzz Touch enthusiasts. Today we're going to tackle the issue of how to get Google Maps to show up in your Android project when you are doing the debug uh, running of your project. While you're developing your project and you're running it in Eclipse and the Android emulator, um, lots of times lots of people have found that they cannot get the map tiles to show up for their location map screen. So we're going to go through the process and how to get that working today. And hopefully by the end of this tutorial, we will have a app running with map tiles showing. Uh, we are doing this a little bit on the fly, even though I have done this once before. Uh, so any issues that we find are issues that you may find along the way, and hopefully we can address these. So here's the general plan for this tutorial. We are going to import our project. We are going to ensure that the Google Map API or above, uh, API 8 or above, is selected. We're going to get a Google Maps API for Android version 1 key, not the new version 2. We're going to modify the strings.xml file. We are going to modify the screenmap.xml file. And then hopefully, if all goes well, well, we're going to run and see map tiles in our app. So why don't we go ahead and get started. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded the source code for this uh, test app. This is an extremely simple app. It has one screen. Uh, the home screen, which is a location map screen. Um, so I have downloaded the zip file, uh, just like you would get straight from BuzzTouch. So I'm going to go ahead and unzip it and extract it into the folder name that it's already been given. Uh, so now if you notice, open it up, it's got everything that we would expect to see in here. So that's a good thing. So minimize that. So now we're going to go ahead and launch Eclipse. Um, and I am using the new Eclipse ADT bundle, um, which I have a tutorial on how to install. And um, that's actually been working out really well. I haven't had any problems with that yet. So we will go ahead and use that. It's the latest package that's available. I have also already installed the Google Map, uh, the Google APIs, and uh, pretty much everything else that we need for this tutorial. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to import our project. So you can go to File, Import, do Existing Android Code into Workspace, hit Next. You want to browse for the root folder of your project. So we're looking for the unzipped root folder. Hit OK. If you get a check mark here and this all uh, you know, laid out here, then it means you're good. Hit Finish. Uh, notice down here at the lower right-hand corner we have Loading Data for Google, so on and so forth. So it's doing its thing. Give it a second to run through everything. So initially, uh, generally the first time that you open up a project, it seems to default to the Android 2.2 API, which I'm guessing is what these problems, the red X, what these problems are related to. We shall see as soon as it's done building the workspace. If you see down here, 50%. Okay, so it's done. So let's hit the problems tab. We have errors 100 of 102. If I expand these, I'm going to see a whole bunch of geo point cannot be resolved, map activity cannot be resolved. That is a 100% indication that we are not configured to use the correct API. So come over here to your package explorer, highlight your uh, your project, your package, right click, go to properties, click on Android, change it from the Android 2.2 to the Google APIs. In this case, Google APIs 8. That's the minimum we want to use. You could use this Google APIs 4.2 uh, or API 17, and that would give you the um, Jelly Bean interface. But let's keep it simple and use the 8. You can hit OK. And now back down here on the right-hand side is rebuilding the workspace. And now you notice that all the problems have gone away. So we are good to actually compile our app at this moment, um, but we wouldn't get what we were looking for quite yet. So one little diversion I want to take, I don't like how my package is uh, named BT Activity Root, so why don't we go ahead and rename that. Again, highlight, right-click, refactor, and rename, and you can name this anything you want, so I'm going to call this Map Tutorial. Hit OK, and it does its thing. And now we have the uh, package renamed Map Tutorial, so it kind of makes you know a little bit more sense. Okay, so now we have to, let's just kind of check where we're at. So we have imported our project, so check. 
We have ensured that the Google API 8 or above is in use. Check. Now we have to get a Google Maps API for Android version 1 key. So just really quickly, let me show you why we need this. If you come here and expand all this stuff out into the res, values, and strings XML file, and double click on that, which will bring up an editor. I'll bring this down. If you click on that file, you will notice here that you have two strings, that, and these are strings that get passed into other parts of the program. So you notice we require a Google Maps key for debug and a Google Maps key for release. Now right now we're just going to uh, concentrate on the debug one uh, because it's the same process for the release. You just get a different key. So we need to get a Google Maps key for debug. Now the other thing to know is that these Google Maps keys are based off of an MD5 hash, which is a fancy security thing that has to deal with the um, uh, with the debug key store that gets automatically generated or generated by you. So it's it's whatever key store that you're going to use to sign your app. Um, you need to get the MD5 hash from that and then generate your key. So I really wouldn't worry about what all that means. You just kind of need to know how to do it. One thing to know is that when you install Eclipse, it automatically generates a debug release key. So if you come in here into desktop and use yourself and go in this .android folder, and there's an equivalent one out there for Linux and Mac, you will find this debug key store. This is a key store, a certificate basically, that you're going to use to sign your application. And um, I have some tutorials out there all about this and what the passwords are and all that kind of stuff. You can also Google it because it's the same password and key store alias. So anyways, now we need to get the MD5 hash for that key store. Just close out of this. Now this is where I'm going to use a pretty cool plugin. It's called Key Tool. Um, I also have a tutorial on how to install this into Eclipse, and it's in the notes for this video. But if you come up to Key Tool, do open key store. Um, just leave the type as the default. Hit browse. You're going to browse over to where we were just were, Android. Find this debug key store. Open that. The password for this is Android. And you can look that up. It's Android. A-N-D-R-O-I-D. Hit load. If you expand this, you'll see that the Android debug key, this is the debug key alias, the key alias, double click on that and it will bring up your entire certificate for this key store. Now notice we have an MD5 fingerprint, like I called it a hash later, MD5 fingerprint, whatever you want to call it. This is the value that you need to have to generate your Google Maps API key for Android applications. So highlight that, do a little copy, and now we're going to come over to a web page. You can Google this, but I will also put this URL in the uh, notes for this show. You need to be logged in to Gmail so or into your Google account. So you do have to have a Google account in order for this to work. Come to this page. Um, say that click on the you have read and agree. And then it says my certificate's MD5 fingerprint. And this is where we paste what we just copied. Make sure you get the whole thing in there with the colons and everything and hit generate API key. So you will be presented with this page when you're done. So right here it says your key is and it gives you this key. And this key for your Android Maps API is specifically tied to the debug key that was created with Eclipse. So these two things have to match. If you use this key you have to sign your application using that debug key store. And by default, when you're doing uh, the debug version of your um, app here, by default, it's going to use that key. So unless you don't use a different one, it'll use that and everything will match up. So go ahead and copy this. Um, and I'd probably write it down somewhere just to make sure that you have it. And I just write down all this information. It's good stuff to have. So we now have our Google maps API key so let's come back into Eclipse um, and now we want to go back into our strings XML file and here where it says Google Maps 
key debug this line right here you want to highlight this part in between the brackets and paste what we copied so it looks exactly like that come up here and hit save and now that file has been saved so we now have our debug key in our strings.xml file so that's the first step the next thing we want to do is come out to our layout folder um, let's go ahead and clear that file double click click on screen map xml and then click on the part here where it's actually uh, editable and you see down here we have this Android API key and it gives us this at string slash Google Maps API key release this entry right here will be populated with what with what was in that strings file so instead of release since we're running our debug here doing it on our emulator we want to change the release part to debug now when you go back to compile this to release it or to create a release APK of your app you're going to want to change that back to release but for the purposes of what we're doing now and for testing it on the emulator you want to change that to debug hit save now we can go ahead and cancel out of that. So now we've accomplished two, two, three more things. We have the Google Maps API key. We've modified our strings XML file. And we have modified the screen map XML file. So at this point, we could run it and see what we want to show, see. But I want to make sure that I show you one, one more thing. If you come in here, to your Android manifest XML file. There's a couple things that you need to look at. Uh, the first thing is when you double click on that, it, it's going to bring up all these things and these are some different ways that you can modify the file without actually having to go in there and, and modify it. Um, so if you scroll through these, you'll see one here that says debuggable and true. Uh, the options are true and false and for a debug session, which is what we're doing now, running it on the emulator, you want to make sure that that's set for true. Then come over here to the editable part of your Android manifest XML file. And um, if you scroll all the way down, oh, so this I want to show you one thing, other thing. So this Android debuggable equals true. That's what we just said over there. So just so you can see where that's at. But if you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you see this. You use this library, Android name, com.google.android.maps. This needs to be uncommented, and by default it is uncommented, so there's nothing you need to do there. So we are actually ready to go. So you can close that if you, out if you want, and then we will go and run our application now. I'm going to switch over to the console and make sure that this is on Android so I can watch what's going on. So highlight your package in patch, Package Explorer. Uh, a couple different ways to do this, but this is the way I do it. Right click and do Run As and pick Android application. But before we do that, I just actually want to go ahead and make sure that you remember to have a virtual device defined using the Google Maps or the Google API 8 or any other Google API that's above 8. So if you don't have one of those defined, then you go, need to go ahead and define it. And uh, there's tutorials out there on that as well. So highlight, right click, run as, Android application, and now we wait. And this is where it can take a little bit of time, depending on how much memory you have in your system, how many procs, all that kind of stuff, what else is going on in your life, the general karma of the universe, uh, whether Google's stock is up or down that day, whatever. Who knows what influences how long it takes for this to get up and running and whether it actually will get up and running. But we will go ahead and, and watch. So it's launching the emulator. You can go over here and watch this stuff to see what's going on. So right here, and there's a couple of warnings in here. You don't have to worry about those. But it's uh, launching a new emulator with a virtual device called BuzzTouch. Um, and it's found a new one. And so now it's waiting for the processes to be launched so that it can actually upload the APK or upload your app to the emulator. Um, and again, this can take a few minutes sometimes or sometimes it takes even longer than that so just be patient keep your eye on the console pane here uh, because this this pane is what really shows you what's going on so uh, 
We will just wait here for a few moments. Okay, so now it's saying home is up on the device, which means it's basically up and running. Um, now it is uploading our APK and it's installing our APK. So it's installing the app onto the emulator. And if you come over here, you may or may not see the home screen. Um, I think there's a little bit of lag between when it says it's ready. Okay, there you go. So you see the home screen. So wait until this is done uh, installing it and that it's actually running before you go do anything. Another thing that you can keep tabs on is Logcat. Uh, this is where all the processes that are going on on the emulator itself are being written to. So you can kind of see what's going on. Things are being uploaded. All these things uh, in orange here with the BT stuff, that's all things that David has coded in there. Good error messages for you. Uh, so go ahead and hit console again. So now we have starting activity and activity manager starting intent. So it should be up and running now. So if you come over here and hit the emulator, just pull that over to open it up and bam, you have a map with map tiles. Uh, this is a single location map. So that's why it's scrolled out or zoomed out so far. But um, there you go, a map with map tiles. So I think the issue that we've had in the past um, that a lot of people have come across and that, quite frankly, I had forgotten about um, because <laughs> I helped encourage David to make the change. But, um, you know, everything was fine in the values strings XML file. Um, but what wasn't being changed was the screen map XML file and the part in there where you change the release to debug. And that's what was, I think, causing... Um, and the map tiles to not be downloaded and for this not to work. So if you take care of all of those, you will have a successful launching of your emulator with map tiles. Uh, and it will be zoomed in closer if you have multiple locations. So we have run and seen our map tiles, number six, and we are good to go. Uh, so there you go. That's in a nutshell. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a... Uh, post on the forum or send me an email or respond to this video or what have you. Um, but hopefully this helps you and everybody get past the uh, map tile problem with the Android emulator. All right, happy app developing and we will see you on the forums.